Hey everyone, welcome back to the fifth Mental Omega Subfaction Spotlight. I am Zenithist, and we will be presenting Russia. And with me is Hector Doomhammer. Good evening, Doom. Good evening, Zenithist. Hi. So, um, before we start off with the uh, Russian specific units, how about we take a little bit of a tour because uh, not everybody knows about the in general Soviet uh, goodies that we've uh, that we've implemented in Metal Omega 3.0. How about we take a little tour of those uh, first and we explain them a little bit of, of what they do and how useful they are before we get really started into the beef of this spotlight. Is that okay with you? Uh, that is perfectly fine with me. Let's get started on the tier 3 heavy defense named the hammer defense. Alright, excellent. Uh, you got a, a shot of that right there? Yeah, I've got a uh, good shot. Uh, okay, excellent. Wow. So, what exactly is the hammer turret? It's kind of like the, the grand cannon equivalent of uh, uh, for the Soviets. It's, it's it's basically just large range of damage. Um, it's, it's, it's got a pretty hefty range, does lots of splash damage, can easily take out large amounts of tanks. As you can see, it's not quite as efficient against infantry. Uh, so, if you want to combat, if you like, want to combat these uh, heavy defenses, then the best option is, of course, to use infantry. And what, what, what kind of technology do you use? Do you know that, too? Uh, I believe it is uh, similar to what Yunru uses in her uh, Earthbreaker. Ah, uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like a seismic. Uh, it's, a si it's kind of like shockwaves through the earth. It's a seismic technology which mm -hmm. the Soviets have used in a defensive stance. I mean, it's all completely complicated technology. Uh, we'll f we'll post that all in detail on the website. Okay, so there uh, is, what do we have? There is, however, one major drawback uh, to the hammer turret, but then again, it's based to all uh, tier 3 defenses that have this yeah. huge mat matter splash. Is that if the enemy is smart enough, you can actually lure uh, the strikes of those t defense t uh, turrets towards critical structures, such as my uh, nuclear power plant here, and it would eventually do me yeah, more correct. harm than good. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, your buildings are, of course, subject to friendly fire from these turrets. So it's definitely important that you, uh, that, that, yeah, that, because they have a minimum range, so you have to be very careful where you place them. And you, think, you, you need to think where you put them and make sure that fa fast units especially are going to be, uh, get, w really fast units and infantry will get past them quite easily. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... so um, next up, about, I have up? the Borillo. Takes the seeds of a ah, the now the this first This should thing be the uh, the tier two transports. Yeah. Now the first thing that you notice is that I have them on the water, but that's not the only thing. On They're the just amphibious. Again. They can be on land and on water. Yeah, of course. Uh, just like the stallion yeah. transport for the Allies, uh, these things can transport up to six infantry units. That they have six passenger yeah. slots. Um, yeah. On the only downside. Kind of yeah. The only thing compared to the uh, stallion that. These things don't have is that upon uh, unaccessible cliffs they cannot get. However, that is compensated with, as you can see, this massive flame turret in front of them, just chewing through the buildings. On to our next stop. Yeah, I see it. So it's like the, it's the only uh, tier two transport at this moment that has oh, that is uh, that actually On has a weapon as well. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty they're pretty strong, pretty hardy for a. Uh, for a mere transport, aren't they? Yeah, as you saw that I just uh, chewed away uh, at your naval yard and I see Fire that you're gonna away. build one again and I say no to that. It, just three of them, as you can see, it takes mere seconds. But continuing on uh, with the Barillo, I also wanted to introduce the new uh, Soviet infantry that I have inside of the Barillos. Of course. Okay. Uh, Ooh, better be careful then. Yeah. Just the calls are pretty potent. Yeah, you can see those Borillos, they're definitely really well made for to charge into the front. They can really rush uh, entrances of bases and they, they, they have enough uh, armor and health that they can withstand several hits from uh, fr from basic defenses, yeah. Well, the infantry that I was speaking of, as you can see, also has the same weaponry as the Borillo has. It is the Pyro. Yeah. Very effective against yeah. buildings. Uh, the flamethrower. Yeah, it's it's significantly effective against uh, light infantry, as you see. Uh, these conscripts don't even stand a chance, but tanks. And they're also very effective against buildings, of course. Yeah, and tanks. That's a different story. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely more anti-structure. Uh, also available from tier two, just like the Borillo. 
it's definitely more yeah, anti-structure, wow. anti-infantry rather than anything else. Okay, I see. That's cool. And with that, um, uh, and with that, it basically closes off the showcasing for the, uh, of the, the Soviet, some of the basic yeah. Soviet planes. units. Yeah. Okay. So let's get on with the uh, actual sublight. Uh, sub Spot. Yeah. Sublight. Spotlight. The spotlight whatever. Things. Same thing. Okay, uh, so of course we're going to be starting off with the basic, everybody knows this unit, the Rhino Tank. Mm -hmm. Now before I actually start to talk about the Rhino Tank, um, one of these uh, Russian specific uh, support powers involving the uh, Rhino Tank, which makes them unique in their own way, Select is the Tank Drop. Yeah, because of course the, the tank itself, the Rhino, is basically a good all-around unit. It has decent firepower, decent armor, decent speed. Um, which in itself isn't particularly special, but they do have a support power specific to Russia, uh, which, as you can see, allows the allows them to power drop three rhinos anywhere on the battlefield. Yeah. However, uh, compared to three, uh, the price compared to three normal rhino tanks built from the uh, war factory, as you see, well, especially with the uh, industrial it's plant, it's a yeah, lot of course. more expensive. Price here, of course. Uh, Moving. Yeah, it's a lot more. Yeah, of course, but you you do definitely get that tactical advantage over it. I mean, you can uh, placing tanks anywhere. You can get a real nasty surprise uh, for enemies if you can like drop it in the back of the base. That can do to that can wreck a lot of havoc. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that's basically all that is to say about the Rhino tank. Uh, all all around, okay. uh, good enough armor, good enough firepower, uh, good enough speed. It's really but its strength is definitely that it can be used as a support as a support power as well. Yeah, I could basically also have Farrah drop them behind Senatus' base and done a little sneak attack. But then mm -hmm. again, I chose not to. Also, uh, I want to quickly point out that uh, one of these three war factories looks a little different, and that has its reasons. Uh, well, but we'll get to that later, we'll I'm sure. We'll get to that a little later indeed. Um, so, okay. next up... A unit that I... <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that sounds particularly familiar. How about you just uh, uh, let it play? Your orders, Commander. <laughs> also we. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so, yeah, the, uh, the Civil. Somebody, some people have been asking about what this unit was, and here it is. The Civil is the, uh, the half-track equivalent for the Russians. Basically, it's, uh, gr it's very, very similar to the original half-track, so it's basically, it's anti-air, anti-infantry, uh, very light transport, can carry two units inside, um, but it's holy crap, what the hell? Um, yeah, but I basically, just, what you, what you, yeah, okay. I just decided um, to put in a few dogs, so... Okay, so come on with but your, anyway, uh, so basically, the, your the main difference, yeah, yeah, but the main difference, uh, is that it's mostly stat-wise, uh, gra is, of course it's got a different graphic, different, etc., but stat-wise, it's, uh, slightly heavier, it's, uh, heavier armor than the half-track, and it's also and it's a sad. little bit slower, so that allows it to keep up with, uh, some of, uh, Russia's heavier support units, and be a bit of a better backup, but it's, it's basically just, uh, speed sacrificed for armor here. Mm -hmm. Anybody ready to start? And I'll admit, yours truly voiced this unit. Oh god. Yeah, so if, if you want him to do more, vo more voices for your projects, then give him a ring. He'll gladly do them all for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, that was the symbol. Yeah, that's the symbol. Okay, uh, moving on. What, uh, what do you have next for us, Doom? Well, it's a... Uh, it's an old Red Alert 2 uh, unit in a new... Jacket, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, right, right. Tesla tank. Yeah, the old Tesla tank has been uh, redone Vamps. and revamped into the Tesla Cruiser. It has significantly more speed than uh, the original. Ooh, it's, it, damn, damn straight. I think it's one of the fastest uh, tier three uh, mm -hmm. Soviet units there is. Yeah. Also, as and you can see, uh, it has a slight EMP uh, when it hits the tank. Yeah, of course, I mean, that was in the lore of the original Red Alert 2, that it could short-circuit tanks, but unfortunately that logic was never really applied to it. So that, that kind of left the Tesla tank, I think, in the original. I thought it was very lacking. So, of course, something uh, something that we did here was, of course, give it a bit of a buff, and we made it kind of the super tank of the Russians. Efficient and clean. Breathing meter. And it is, it, I think it's absolutely devastating. I mean, it's got better range, it can shoot fire over walls, it's got the EMP effect, it's much quicker than the original, so in every way it's... But it's a considerable improvement. It's it's you can actually use this tank uh, to great effect. 
need a little boost. Yeah, and of course, as curiosity. always, need it can be used boost. to clear out the trees. Just a little thing. Yeah, okay. So yeah, okay. the Tesla tank, uh, the Tesla Cruiser, uh, the Tesla tank no longer exists. The Tesla Cruiser. Just remember that name. Maximum yeah. Well, we just, just gave it a spiffier name. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So what uh, what do you have next for us, dude? What's uh, what's next on the plan? I'm sure you have uh, some great ideas for us. Yeah, you all might remember the V3 launcher, the V3 rockets. Moving to new launcher. Oh yeah, the V3 launcher. Mm -hmm. Man, that was a shitty ass unit. Light armor, real fast. Tier no, two. I not, yeah, I remember. Not it. fast. It was slow as hell. Okay. And the rocket well, fire well, slow as hell as well. But I'm uh, I'm actually moving them across uh, the center of the map, uh, closer to your base, and uh, we're, we're gonna see okay. what it does. Or actually, I'm gonna okay. place too close, them in please. the center of the island, and uh, I'm gonna target your uh, yeah your naval yard. So. I'm just okay. Gonna... Yeah, because I remember that the V the V three rocket and the Scud launcher as well. Uh, they're artillery units. They're basically for long range destruction, uh, used uh, to target buildings, and the Scud is absolutely devastating. I think it's personally, I think it's probably one of the better artilleries in the game at the moment, due to it's simply it's got one of the biggest ranges uh, of artillery in the entire range, or in the uh, big one of the biggest ranges in the entire game for an art for a land based artillery. And as you see, it's it's pretty damn fast. Um, yeah. Luckily, it's it, it or at least that should be the case. Um, it is possible to shoot down to shoot down these rockets. So you can you t with a sufficient amount of anti air, you can definitely uh, stop you can definitely stop these missiles. But of course, with the sheer amount of scuds that Doom has here, that might be a little bit difficult with the small amount of units that I have here. Yeah. Well, uh, of that? course, as you can see, if you remember the uh, the old. Uh, Red Alert 2, Euros Revenge uh, V3 launcher, is that the rocket actually moves a lot faster than uh, yeah, it's definitely the original. Quite a bit. It's also got a little bit better armor so that it's slightly more difficult to shoot it down because it's definitely been a problem uh, back in the day that scud launchers were just way too easy to counter against because uh, they, 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 you could simply shoot down the rocks. If you placed Unit enough anti-air there was no way you could possibly hit by them. Unit lost. Now what I'm doing now is uh, just preparing for something that I've uh, got in store for Zenith uh, a little later. Okay. And luckily... Oh. Seems that I was planning a spoiler. or well, whatever. So yeah. Uh, okay, so... Um, according to, what do you have next? According to the uh, players currently of the Mental Omega 3.0, the Scud Launcher is definitely yeah. one of the, if not the best, artillery in the game. Yeah, so, uh, of course, balances are still be balancing is still being done, of course, mm -hmm. naturally. I mean, it's still beta. Um, but yeah, this, this is pretty much, this is pretty much the Scud, uh, the Scud Launcher. So, um, we've, we've got the Scud Launcher, we had our T3, uh, tank. So, uh, what else do you have? Because I noticed that the, uh, Russians, they don't exactly have a dedicated anti-air unit, do they? No, they don't ha really have a dedicated anti-air unit, but they have got a unit that is absolutely great for support and uh, all-round super assault. The Wolfhound. And I see that you ah, have... Ah, right, the Wolfhound, yeah. Yeah, I see that you have a significant anti-air. Of course, uh, it is very... Uh, very effective, uh, effective by anti-air. Yeah, of course. Because I mean, what, what is the Wolfhound is kind of like a very slow. Uh, so, uh, so it's it's basically it's a support. It's a heavy support unit. It's got it's got plenty of it's, it's got plenty of damage. It can dish out damage. It can take it reasonably well as well as you can see. But they're incredibly slow. So if you get them caught up in, say, anti-air fire, as I would now do with some fast units, uh, they would go down in flocks. But you can definitely see that you definitely don't want to swarm with these little buggers in your base anytime soon, because they will uh, they will they will absolutely wreck everything. Yeah. But as you can see, against anti-air, they are no match. No. Even with their powerful rocket, it's it's just it's just too much. It takes too but long. Yeah, basically, basically, uh, this is kind of this is kind of the Russians' uh, tier three anti-air as well, because it's also very effective against air units. Uh, so all in all, it's a general. It's slightly le it's less specialized it's more um yeah it's, it's more a better for a better all-around support heavy assault good support unit basically 
Yeah, okay. So and it just looks totally kick-ass. <laughs> yeah. Also, this was, uh, when it comes to voices, this was the very first uh, new custom unit that was customly yep, voiced. that's right. By Bouncy right. T-E-M. Exactly. So, next up, let's take this war to the seas. Bakula, ready for mission. Instead of the okay. uh, Dreadnoughts that was uh, custom for, uh, that was made for Red War 2 and uh, Yours Revenge, the Russians have the Akuma well, missile sub. For the glory of Mother yeah, how many Russia. hands can I see for uh, people who, who who here has played Red Alert 1? Can I see some hands here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, no, no, not really seeing any hands here. Nobody yeah. nobody played Red Alert 1 me, here? Me, me. Well, you, you Yeah, really? Okay, I'm not seeing it in the chat or anything, but okay. No, oh, check it out, check it out. Here it comes. All right, cool. You guys are awesome. Uh, then most of you will probably remember from the campaigns that you used to have missile subs. Yeah, well, this is kind of like the this is kind of like the spiritual uh, successor that the Akula sub is uh, heavy is the is the heavy capital ship of the Russians, which is basically if some people thought well, a bit of a shame that the boomer's gone and you know it it sucked that it that it's that it's been removed out of the game. Well, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is a, it's pretty much as you can see it's pretty much functions uh, comparable to the boomer. It's uh, it, it, it's 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 like it's a it's a uh, it, though it has been rebalanced in order to make it to make it uh, not as broken. Holy crap! Though I don't think any amount of balance will be able to, will uh, let me stop that sheer amount of uh, of missiles at the same time. Though it seems though it seems, it seems my uh, my anti air seems to be doing okay. It seems to be uh, it's a, it's a, it's 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 okay in, for enough. And uh, that's not the only thing, of course, because the uh, Akula. Ooh, clever bastard. Uh, the Akula is also it also uh, it's also pretty deadly if you uh, if you destroy it isn't that right, Doom? Well, yeah, it's supposed to have this uh, explosion that it just causes some radio. At least I think that was that was that, that was the original yeah. plan. I don't know if it's still that was the original it. plan. Uh, I think it did. We just removed radiation from it because it was just turning out to be a bit of a bother because it meant that uh, your own ships would be uh, decloaked if it hit radiation. That's kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have. It doesn't have the. Uh, it doesn't have the explosion anymore. Okay, so that's okay. Been, that's been removed and of because course, apparently that turned out to be a bad idea. Mm -hmm. And of course, it still has uh, significant range to just. Yeah, yeah so of course, it's, it's it's the capital ship. It's got plenty of range. It's got plenty of damage. And if you can, it, just like every other uh, uh, capital ship, if you can get past the anti-air of your enemy's base, then yeah, you could absolutely devastate them. But as you can see, against uh, like real ship killing units, uh, they're no match. No, you definitely need uh, sub -sup uh, submarine support, uh, also a little bit of anti-air perhaps. Even Borobos can do some uh, significant damage. Exactly, Ab yeah, you definitely need all- it, it definitely needs to support, it's not a one-man army. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay uh, so what do we have next? Right now I'm uh, back in my base and as you can see that different looking war factory is gone. That is because that was the Stalinist mobile war factory, which is now stationed right there. You deploy it, Move you double click it to make it your primary. I don't. Building. And. Where's the doom? I don't. I don't see it. Gear of reporting. You uh, you got it. You got that somewhere hidden, didn't you? I'm around. Reposition. Building. And as you can see, if you prepare well enough, like I did with my cure off. Just have it at uh, ninety-eight percent. Deploy it. Make it your. Uh... Oh shit! <laughs> Oops! Didn't expect that now, did ya? I bear the way. Go. So yeah, like I said, if you uh, deploy your uh, Stalin's fist and you uh, basically make it your primary building uh, for construction. Yeah, because really back in the day we used to have the uh, war factory, which which allowed you to set rally points. We've removed the rally point setting now. Uh, Not and really. Well, the rally points still well, we exist. It does. It does. Of course. Check it. As far as I, okay, because as far well, I can't check it now because I'm abs I'm being wrecked by your Kirov here. But uh, for you. I okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll spare you. I'll spare you because we're not done yet. So I'm I'm just gonna send it over to your uh, Seawolves. Okay. And I'll spare you okay. the rest of any humiliation that could have been. I'm go I think I'm gonna go all out with this attack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all out with this. No, I wouldn't do that yet because we st okay. we're not done yet. Okay. But uh, we've got. Uh, so we've got yeah, because back in the day we used to have the war factory, the mobile war factory in 2.0 for the uh, for the Soviets. 
uh, where it w you you wouldn't be able to you weren't be you weren't it wasn't possible to move it now back then. You could only set rally points for it. We've switched it around now. You can't do rally points for it anymore, but you can uh, un you can repack it. You can move it around, and it heals itself. And it's also a neat little thing uh, that Doom didn't showcase, but is maybe something that'll get that'll get you out of a pinch if you're cornered. Is that the Mobile War Factory can crush other tanks? Oh yeah, I completely Ooh, forgot wow. to show that. But then again, you were well, uh, that's fair, but moving away. I was uh, I was fleeing, fleeing, <laughs> flee, 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 flee. reporting. Okay, exactly. Um, well, so what do we have? Ne what do we have next? I think uh, we should showcase the uh, we we heroes, but. All oh, right, excellent. So. That's that's more that's more like it. Okay, so we have, of course, uh, just a second. Uh, where we, yeah, where do we start with? Well, uh, from Red Alert One uh, aftermath, Unit if I'm not mistaken, ready. you might remember that uh, the Soviets had uh, because of yeah, oh, they oh, began oh, to oh, experiment oh. with uh, cybernetics and cybernetics. Impl implementing them in uh, human bodies. Capacitors fully charged. Um, that actually resulted into uh, uh, Volkov and yeah. also his and Shitskoy. Uh, yeah, Shitskoy, his uh, loyal K9. Yeah, that's companion. an absolute death machine. Not only because he's very powerful, but also because his name is incredibly difficult to pronounce for Westerners, <laughs> especially like me. So yeah, um, especially, especially like. Him. But uh, okay, so how about you uh, show like off, show days. show us the Kill robot dog? All. Where is he? Oh, I want to go. Six, uh, the six million dollar, the six million dollar uh, dog. Nobody to kill. Okay, gentlemen, we can rebuild him. Yeah, that's the best thing. They actually have to save the blueprints. We have the technology and the technology. All right, uh, here he comes. Oh, I see it. There he goes. Shoot him. Kill him. Oh God. Oh, he's kind of like a terror drone. Yeah. Okay, but uh, now you destroyed him. Awesome. Well, that was easy. So. <laughs> okay, so basically, what is what is Chit Squad? Well, you can train him again. I mean, he's, he's, yeah, he's like okay. it's okay. He's he's really, really cheap to train. He's he's kind of like he's the cheapest hero at the moment, I think, to train. Is that right? Uh, yeah. He costs cause, he costs one thousand. Yeah, because it's more like he's more he's not exactly a direct assault unit like uh, Volkov is, and that we'll show in a few seconds. Uh, he's more of a bit of a support unit. He's kind of like, what if a terror drone was incredibly overpowered? <laughs> Because what, what he, as you as you see the uh, the time it takes for him to rip apart infantry and go uh, jump over to a next target is considerably faster, and you can uh, you can also see that he he, ta he takes apart tanks way 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 faster. Better be careful though because small arms fire will definitely get him. You can see here in this miner here that he's absolutely it's absolutely taking it apart. It's just mm -hmm. in seconds it's got it's going to be gone. And then um, just as easily, it'll just jump over to the next. It it'll jump over to the next target, and that uh, seconds, seconds is all it needs. Absolutely. So that's 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 pretty crazy. I mean, it's a, a cyborg dog, but of course, I mean, it's immune to radiation, it's immune to poison, seeing as it's predominantly a robot. I mean, it's immune to mind control, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, with all cyborgs and all cyborg-related units, uh, they are affected by EMP. Yeah. Now it's time to move on to the other uh, Russian hero that I'm now currently using to destroy your tank. Kill the dog! Run away, run away, run away, run away! Alright, here we go, awesome! Why do we the, uh, the front cover guy, Volkov! Need a shocking therapy, I see. Mm -hmm. Nikola would How about you, uh, whoa. just like the old days. <laughs> How would you say what? And they run. Yeah. No, but as you can see, what, what we have here yes, is Cobra. basically Volkov with the uh, pr probably the coolest charge. Tesla weapon in the and game, which is kind of some kind of chain lightning gun, mm -hmm. basically. So it, it spreads over to other machine. units, uh, kind of like how the old elite weapon used to work. Uh, it's it's kind of different like that because it actually links to different units, which is really neat. And especially when you can see it on the elite here, uh, I think because he's a cyborg, of course, he, he can't be crushed by any vehicle because uh, most heroes usually can't be crushed by normal vehicles. That's true, but there are some vehicles which are extra heavy, extra powerful, which are also capable of crushing tanks, such as the mobile the mobile war factory, the battle fortress, and they would potentially be able to crush other heroes, but not Volkov. Not it. Yeah, he's he's got he's a goddamn robot. You don't just crush that shit. He's made of steel and iron. Yeah. Now the, like, re the reason why uh, I put in the uh, Tesla cruisers and Tesla 
uh, troopers. And actually, I should also have done a Tesla like coil, but unfortunately, I'm not uh, able to build one. Capable of is, showing that here. Yeah, is the, uh, yeah. the second Soviet or second support power. Russian support power, the overcharge. Alright, so what, is it, what exactly does overcharge do, do? It, um. Because I think. Because, yeah. as far as I heard, um. It, it literally doubles the damage. Uh, for 20 seconds, it doubles the damage of all uh, Tesla friendly Tesla weaponry that you have within that radius. Yeah, and that goes for Tesla coils, Tesla uh, cruisers, Tesla troopers, and of course uh, Volkov himself. Yeah. So if you uh, if you were to use let's say the uh, the old technique of uh, three Tesla troopers near uh, Tesla t uh, coil. Need a shocking therapy. Um, you would use the overcharge, it just increases the, the amount of defense that you can do even yeah. more. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's insane, really. It's, it's, it's max, maximum power. So really. And I mean, coupled with, coupled with, EMP, or with EMP as well, that makes for a really devastating edge tank uh, combination. And I mean, Volkov, Volkov is, a is a tough uh, son of a gun. I mean, you see here, he's, ta he's taking. Uh, my, he's taking minor and fire damage here like, like it's nothing. Now you die. And just to oh, be a ma major yeah, annoyance, see, I just, sent uh, uh, Chitskoy inside of your uh, construction yard. Yeah, I see it. Well, that, that kind of means the end of me. <laughs> yeah, that means the end of you. Because we were, we were done. And this was actually the last of the yeah. uh, special things yeah, that we wanted is, to showcase. I think this is all we have for... Uh, yeah, this is all we have for Russia. So I would like to uh, thank you all. And until next week.